John, before we get to the crypto market in your calls, I do want to touch on um, the Avid Labs news that we got this week. Our own Bloomberg News team here reporting that Ava cut jobs by 12% this week in a restructuring. We should note it's just the latest layoffs to hit the cryptocurrency sector. What can you tell us about this restructuring? Well, that's right, Tim. And, you know, that day was probably the toughest day in yeah. my four years at Ava Labs. Um, but in the last four plus years, we've gone from 10 people to 270 before this, this 12%. And the world has changed. Like any fast growing business, you have to assess where the market is, what kind of products you're building, and analyze it and then make the necessary changes. So it was very tough. I call some of those people my friends, but it was necessary. And the team is leaner and I've got 200 and almost 40 people still that I have to think about. So is this it for, for cuts yes, for the next a, year or so? It's a, it, it was a one-time um, thing, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I guess one thing, though, if you could just pull back and talk a little mm -hmm. bit about the market for Bitcoin so far this year. I mean, there's just been this resurgence. What's the, is that going to continue? Are we going to see a Bitcoin ETF? Oh, I mean, that is obviously the rage. I mean, so first, the surge in the, the Bitcoin prices. Keep in mind, I'm an operator, but I used to be a fund manager, so I keep a lot of perspectives in mind. Um, it was really two things. It, recently, you've had um, the, uh, call it uninverting of the yield curve from a macro perspective. You had also l uh, announced that there'll be less supply in treasury auction sales. So that created a backdrop from a macro perspective that was very positive for risk assets and crypto included in that. But on a micro perspective, you had, um, I think you called it on your own show, exuberance for these ETF potentials. Uh, I think we're getting closer to the reality of one of those. And reality is I think a lot of these institutional managers are trying to get ahead in anticipation of that. How, how are they doing that? Just by buying Bitcoin or I mean, how do you how do you get ahead of that? Yeah, I mean, I think they are buying. Um, well, if you look at the volumes where they're coming from, if you are doing it on centralized exchanges like a Coinbase, or are you doing in a decentralized exchange, which is on chain? Typically, the crossover investors, the institutional hedge fund types, they do it on chain. So you can do it either through uh, Coinbase or you can do it through proxies. Those are basically Grayscale's product. Then you also have other uh, proxy products out there, trusts like that. And you have certain stocks that you can buy it. So if you look at that, you would say that it was more crossover traditional people getting ahead of the ETF announcement. How much do you think Grayscale is spending on marketing? Because you cannot go into an airport in the New York City area or the Washington DC area and not see an ad for GBTC. Listen, when you have 30 billion in assets and you charge what they charge, you have decent, you know, marketing budget. And do you think they're also doing marketing to get ahead of that, uh, to gin up interest ahead of a spot Bitcoin ETF? They've been very consistent in their marketing even before this. Um, you know, part of their job is also to proselytize asset managers and they've been very good at it. I know those guys well. They've been doing it for more than five, mm -hmm. six years. Yeah, one thing, just to go back to the you know the outlook here. I mean, you mentioned this link between a risk on appetite and demand. What's the chance that that risk on appetite is going to continue into next year? I mean, we've certainly got a lot of macro feedback that that's not that that's not going to be the case. Yeah, I mean that is everything is likely, and it's a and it's a volatile asset class, so anything can happen in the short term. But if you look at it over the course of the year. Bitcoin's actually a lot better than most tech stocks. It's up something like two to three hundred, somewhere between two and three hundred percent. Literally two or three hundred percent. You can't even tell you exactly unless you're really studying it day to day. Um, so actually, over the longer period of time, it's still doing relatively well. Can it go backwards? Sure. Um, and I wouldn't even be surprised. Uh, people have bought in anticipation the news and then um, sell it on the news, so to speak, of an ETF release. But uh, just think about it. BlackRock has ten trillion in assets. So, you know, if one percent of their distribution picks up on this, that's you know, hundred billion. Hundred billion. You know, the Bitcoin ETF, a uh, Bitcoin uh, market cap, I think is about seven hundred ish. So it's like fourteen percent increase in demand, and that's only one percent of just uh, BlackRock. You have Fidelity, you have other big players involved. So over time, it'll still continue to have positive inflows. Okay. You know, and then just to continue on with the sort of sentiment around the market at this point, can you explain a little bit about how the implosion of FTX is landing in terms of getting new customers in, 
people sticking with the asset class? Well, obviously, when it happened, uh, the FTX uh, scenario, it was literally about a year ago, mm -hmm. everything changed. The market structure of uh, the asset class really deteriorated. A lot of players left the system. I think what's good right now, a year later after the trial, is that people are saying, okay, it's almost there where we can put this chapter behind us and move forward. So I think the fact that we can put this chapter or closer to putting this chapter behind us, we removed a lot of bad actors, is all viewed positive going forward. I saw last week, the, I believe it was last week or the week before, Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong if you know this, that um, we saw another uh, person accused of being a bad actor in the crypto space um, by the Southern District of New York. Like this was an actual, you know, complaint. Um, where are we in weeding everybody out? I think we're farther along than people realize. Um, there are bad actors. I mean, this place has, I've been in this space for a while. This space has been a, a petri dish of genius experimentation and frauds and scams, unfortunately. You know, regulatory rules are different in every part of the world and, and they're frankly uncertain. So it allows the bad actors to come in and try to take advantage of things. But what is happening with, um, this ETF uh, potential, as well as, again, I'm an operator. Alva Labs is actually a software services company helping people build on Avalanche. The partnerships and the business development relationships we're building with professionals tells me professionals are coming into the space. There's new leadership coming. And it's frankly nice to see a blend of great technologists working with domain experts, whether that be traditional finance or the stuff we're working on in Asia with gaming companies or loyalty rewards programs. Yeah, I mean, that's my next question for you, isn't it? It's the, the, the industry developing and more professionals coming in. What's sort of the vision in terms of pursuing that with corporate partnerships? So the vision for Ava Labs, again, software service, just like Red Hat was for Linux, is to help people deploy things on top of Avalanche, create real business use cases for traditional companies as well as crypto native uh, companies. So giving them product market fit, getting them business use cases. Stable coins was a perfect example. I think that is the real first thing in uh, blockchain or Web3, if you will, that has established product market fit. Brevin Howard's research said there was over 11 trillion on-chain settlement in stable coins in last year. Um, that's the same volume, almost the same volume as Visa um, over the course of a year. So wow. my prediction you know, for next year, 2024, is you're going to have uh, the same volume as both Visa and MasterCard in terms of stablecoin settlements 